Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Tuesday of the third week of Advent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this very interesting parable was used by Jesus to really challenge uh, the chief priests and the elders to understand that they are among those who have purported, have reported, and have even said publicly that they are going to do the will of the Father, but did not do it. And he compared them to those who said, we're not going to do what God has called us to do, but ended up doing it. And those are the tax collectors, the prostitutes, uh, those that uh, responded to the call of John the Baptist to repent. And as Jesus was pointing out, this is the group that really did the Father's will, not the ones that say it with their mouth, but the ones that really act upon it and live it out in their lives. They initially said no to God. They said no by the manner of their lifestyle. Tax collectors and prostitutes were among the lowest of the low when it came to the human classes there in Jerusalem. But as Jesus pointed out, they turned around and went the other way. That's what the word repentance is all about. They repented, they turned around, and did the opposite of what they declared by their previous lives they would be doing, and that is to disobey God. Here, they wanted to actually come back to him and allow their lives to be aligned with the purposes of God. And then Jesus said to them, you know, even when you saw that, you too didn't turn around and repent of your ways, of leaving God behind. And there's a couple of things here that I, I really think it's really important for us to see. Number one, for those who have refused God, there is always a way back in. That through repentance, through turning our lives around, and in the church we have a beautiful way of doing that. First of all, if you've never been baptized, through baptism you move from death to life, and then you begin to live out your life for the purposes of God. And then even after your baptism, let's say that you wander, you still can come back through repentance, through confession of sin, through the absolution that God can give you. You again can find that new life restored within you. But the beautiful thing that Jesus says at the end, he says, when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. In other words, there's that second opportunity always there for us. Let's say that we do make that initial commitment to God. But then, as we live out our lives, we've chosen to go the other way. This is the case of so many people that have initially started living for God, but then gave it up for one reason or another. And there are, are more reasons and excuses than uh, we, we could even go into of why people say that they don't want to live for God any longer. But anyway, as Jesus points out here at the end, for those of us who may have wandered away after initially saying yes, we still have that opportunity to come back and let our initial yes be lived out as a yes for today. 
And I think that's a beautiful thing. There's always an opportunity for restoration. That the arms of the Lord are open wide. They're open to us to return to him, just like the prodigal son. That we might have that opportunity to again be restored to the righteousness that can be ours through his grace and his forgiveness. And then living out our lives in that righteousness, we attain again that hope that we have of eternal life with him in heaven. This is good news for Advent, good news for a time where during our self-examination we may find ourselves having wandered away. But now we can really know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is room at the cross for us that we can come back and find ourselves welcomed again into his fellowship. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What a joy it is to be with you again during this Advent season and to have us relive those messages of hope that our Lord has given us, that no matter how far away we may have gotten, there is always room to return. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.